Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming to our lecture this evening. Um, I would like to introduce uh, Megan Mello and Erin Valentine, and they will be um, presenting and speaking this evening on um, 25I, the drug. Erin um, Valentine is an 11-year veteran of pharmaceutical research in the field of cancer therapeutic drug discovery. She has been working with Representative Corey Atkins, who championed the bill H1155, an act regulating NBOM I-25 as a dangerous synthetic drug. And she has testified before the Judiciary Committee on July 14, 2015. Her most important role is mother to four beautiful children. Now, Megan is 16-year-old junior at Coyle and Cassidy High School. She is captain of the girls' cross-country team and track team, volunteers countless hours to the Coyle and Cassidy food pantry. She's a member of several clubs at uh, Cassidy. She has been a Girl Scout for 13 years since she was in preschool and is working on her Girl Scout <coughs> Gold Award the highest award <coughs> achieved as a Girl Scout. She has chosen 25I Awareness as her project because it is near and dear to her heart and is in memory of her friend, Emily. Uh, let me see, can I have a, here, thank you. If you have a, do y'all have a little bulletin? We'll get you. We'll get you another one. I'm good. We like, as our tradition, as we have these Howard lectures, to uh, have a prayer together before we start. This is an adapted adapted prayer that comes from the um, Glastonbury Abbey over in Hingham. Um, I've added a few words. Uh, specifically the word gender and also and your earth at the end. So let us pray, please. Eternal source of all that is, has been, and yet will be, all time and space is made holy in your infinite love. Amid the ebb and flow of the ages, only you abide unchanged. May we find the courage to embrace our common call to be your compassion and light for those afflicted by chronic intolerance and inhumanity. May our speech and actions reveal your saving presence beyond the boundaries of gender, race, religious diversity, or the realms of politics. Strengthen us to be your listening heart and your prophetic voice for the healing of our common humanity and your earth. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Ashton. So, um, Hi, as Reverend Ashton said, my name is Erin Valentine. Um, my daughter, Emily Miller, was a student with Megan Rainham um, up until the sixth grade and when we moved to the town of East Bridgewater. Um, and at the end of Emily's freshman year in 2014, she briefly began hanging out with a new crowd of friends. This period of time was br extremely brief. It was less than a week because of just a few days after meeting some of these new friends of hers, I experienced the terrible tragedy that is the nightmare of the dangers of the drug I had never heard of, which is 25i. I found out that Emily had been offered this drug twice and said no out of fear before the night she succumbed to peer pressure and took just one tab of 25i. The aftermath was a violent reaction that left her with medically, in a medically induced coma with multiple machines keeping her alive. Emily was 14. She turned 15 on June 5th, 2014. She passed away June 21st, 2014. It has been a distinct honor and extraordinary experience working with Megan Mello, Emily's classmate and best friend at Rainham Middle School, fellow Girl Scout for years, in the same troop even as we were in East Bridgewater and a forever true blue friend. Megan has worked tirelessly at putting together and spreading this 25i awareness campaign to help educate teens about the dangers of this drug in hopes to prevent another tragedy such as Emily's. 
Please give a warm welcome to Megan Mello. Hi, um, I'm Megan Mello. Uh, as I said before, I'm a junior at Allen Cassidy High School. Um, I'm going to tell you about 25i, which is the drug that is fatally and detrimentally affecting the teens and young people in uh, our area, our country, and all over the world. Um, 25i is a very potent psychedelic drug. It's not similar to other well-known drugs such as marijuana. It is a hallucinogenic, which is similar to LSD, but it's so much more powerful. It imitates a natural substance, but it has such very different mechanisms. It's fairly new, but it's starting to make its mark, starting with middle school age children. 25, uh, excuse me, 25i N-bomb, also known as SMILES, is a derived der derivative I'm sorry, of a research chemical which was developed by a postdoc, Ralph Heem, at the FRE University of Berlin in Germany. He was researching a potential PET tracer to observe a metabolic process in the body. A PET tracer is a substance also known as a contrast agent used in <coughs> medical scans to provide clear images of the internal organs, cellular process, and tumors. Its original use was to measure the serotonin receptor, which is the feel-good transmitter, from a group of drugs called phenethylamines, or PEAs. He tested it on rats, and due to the death rate, he deemed it toxic and poisonous due to, due to its ex extreme potency and lethality. The effects on the rats were that the serotonin binding was too strong for medical use and could not be easily flushed from the brain. The effects on humans are causing strong hallucinations for an extended period of time. One woman reported on having hallucinations for almost a year and a half after taking the drug. A PEA is a stimulant on the human brain that increases the actions of dopamine transmitters, um, well-being and feeling pleasure, which is the purpose of those transmitters um, in the brain's emotional center. Serotonin is a contributor to better mood control and impulse control. PEA drugs are used to treat ADHD or different types of depression. Uh, it's an agonist of the 5-HT2A receptor, which means that it initiates a physiological response and has to do with the central nervous system, contributing to the feelings of happiness and sending false interpretations of happiness. Serotonin is a transmitter used in the brain signaling and manipulated for treating depression. 25i is not a natural substance, un uh, unlike the phenethylamines. Um, because it binds to all the serotonin receptors and is not easily flushed away from your brain. Nine of the PEA-derived drugs were made illegal in 2012 in the US, including all 25i variations. Um, some other names for 25i are 25C, 25B, Genome, New Nexus, Dime, Solaris, and Smiles. And over here on the left, that is LSD. But right here on the right, that's 25i. You cannot tell the difference between the two, as you can see here. Um, uh, the other forms of it, it can be sold on blotter paper, on, um, in powder, uh, as a liquid or nasal drips. Um, it's so potent that it has to be packaged in tin foil because it starts to seep into your skin and allow you to hallucinate just by touching it. Um, what people do is that they usually use tweezers to pick it up and then place it into their mouth really quickly because in the mouth, that's where it goes directly to your brain. But um, having it seep through the skin gets rid of the potency uh, from the original drug. Um, how 25i popularities, popularity flourished. <laughs> it exploded on online forums. I went to one of those drug blogs uh, where, where they talk about the newest drugs and, uh, and how to take them and stuff like that. And I saw only positivity about 25i, saying that it's a trip of a lifetime or 
the best new thing and they compare it to LSD saying it has similar effects when the reality is that the mechanisms and the effects are so different. Um, the batches are so inconsistent and one tab on a blotter paper could be uh, 2,000 times more potent than the one right next to it. One could cause lethality, uh, no, fatality, sorry. And one could either give you only small hallucinations or nothing, or uh, nothing close to death. Um, dealers try to pass it off as a legit pharmaceutical um, from China or India or other countries whenever they don't really know what it is. Um, so the way that the batches could be or that one is because one in three people die from it uh, who take it. So say you guys take it. One, two, three, you die. One, two, three, you die. One, two, three, you die, etc. It just keeps going on and on and on. Um, manufacturers in China and India make the drug without regulation and sell it overseas for a huge profit in countries such as this one that don't make it directly here. Dealers make their own versions in labs and import them from other countries saying that it's safe or legal uh, or natural when on the, packagi on the packaging you can see right here it says not for human consumption even though the name Mr. Happy t would tell the person who's buying it otherwise. Um, also right here it has the uh, it has a smiley face with the Joker hat on and it's it's aimed towards young kids on this side. Oh, oop, I'm ahead of. I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> I don't um, uh, the appearance of 25i is very similar to LSD. <coughs> However, the effects on the brains are very different. 25i stops cell function and production of all your vital organs. Um, one grain of 25i, which is as small as one ten thousandth of a pound or 0.0001428.57 of a pound uh, of 25A and bum can mean the difference between life or death. Uh, Tara Fitzgerald from Michigan who reminds me a bit of Emily um, not because she took the same drug she had the same uh, she had similar personalities and like the same music um, she was a good kid and a good student, uh, very artistic and musical. She, pur she purchased it from a dealer under the pretense of LSD and admitted to the police that synthetic drug in the, her dealer admitted to the police that synthetic drugs don't sell well in the drug market because they're said to be not as good as the natural stuff. So they, the dealers, they sell it as the natural stuff in reality when it's not so you could buy it from someone and it could uh, it could be something completely different um, so that is not the reality 25 25i is extremely potent and will have an effect on anyone no matter how uh, no matter how high their alcohol or drug resistance is uh, Natural LSD will not physically cause death, but since 25i is a chemical compound, uh, it's highly lethal and will cause all, uh, many, if not all, of your organs to shut down. If one variation of 25i is deemed <coughs> illegal, like say 25b was deemed illegal, uh, you change one molecule of it, a single <coughs> atom, and it's a completely new drug, and no one, no one, and the authorities knows about it. Um, if you take one hit of it, you never really know what you're actually taking. It's targeted towards young people. It's targeted towards young people um, and adults, at, because right here it says Dr. Feel Good, and right here is the Camel cigarette logo. Um, and then there's just cartoons and stuff making it look attractive to attract younger people 
who don't really know what it is to buy it. Um, some of the effects are visual and mental hallucinations, disorientation, confusion, aggression, paranoia, and insomnia. Some of the physical, oh, excuse me, some of the physical effects are shaking, nausea, muscle spasms, difficulty breathing, uh, rapid heart rate, seizures, foaming at the mouth, complete organ failure, etc., etc., etc. The list could go on and on, but I couldn't write them all down because there could be so many more that I don't even know about. Um, so many people have, who have taken this drug have died. There have been so many cases of young people dying from just a single drop of this drug. As of 2016, there have been dozens of teenage deaths due to just one ingestion. Alex Ryan from Cork, Ireland was at a party with five other friends. A neighbor was annoyed with the amount of noise that was coming from the house because there was loud music playing. He was 18 years old and just at a party. Um, and they came over to complain when they looked into the window and saw that there were five people on the ground bleeding out of their nose because they snorted the 25 eye and so they were bleeding out of their nose and one person was in the back seizing and foaming at the mouth. Um, Aaron had a radio interview with um, someone, with one of the news crews in Ireland and she told them about what happened to Emily and what happened uh, and what the drug actually is and, because they've never heard of it around there and hopefully his parents were listening in and learn and know more about it. Um, his organs were donated to the hospital and he, uh, many people benefited from them. Um, this is Preston Bridge. He's from Australia. Uh, he went to a party after a school dance and took what he thought was LSD. His father went undercover uh, with 60 Minutes to one of the manufacturing companies in China and saw how cheap it was to produce. They were producing kilos upon kilos of the drug for such a small price. And um, one, uh, one grain of it is $5 and five dollars plus a thousand kilos, five thousand dollars for for something that is like this big. Um, uh, since there are no dogs I can sniff through every single uh, package that comes through the mail, they can't really detect exactly what package has the drug and what package just has a CD that mom's shipping to his son in college. Um, and so there have been many deaths in the United States. There was Clayton Otwell, from, age 25, from Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, got it from someone at a music festival. Um, Noah Carrasco, I'm not very good with names. Um, he was from, he was 18 from Scottsdale, Arizona. Anthony Carlson, 18, from Scottsdale. Um, he was, and him and 20-year-old Eden Bell received two years in prison for both deaths, uh, for the death of Noah, and charges were trying to sell pot. Um, if someone, if you, if someone is sold a drug, the 25i or any drug, and they die from that drug, the person who sold it to them goes to jail for um, maybe 25 to life. These people, uh, these people who sold it to Noah got it off easy and only got two. Um, Zachary De Niro, age 15, from Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, four people were charged with the felony conspiracy to traffic of, the sub of 25i. Chandler Thomas, age 19, from Austin, Texas. Uh, a young man sold it to him and received six months. Uh, Montana Sean Brown, age 15, of Frisco, Texas. Um, I got in touch with Montana Sean Brown's father, and he gave me permission to 
talk about his Facebook page. There's, uh, it talks about, it talks about 25i and about this boy's life, and um, he took it at a party because he thought it was LSD. So many people are thinking that it's LSD when it's really not. Um, there's Tara Fitzgerald from Woodbury, Minnesota, who I talked, whom I talked about earlier, and how she thought it was LSD as well, and she reminds me of Emily. Um, her death is on Dateline, NBC. So if if you'd like later to look look up this, uh, I remember whenever it came out, I was sitting there with my mom and my friend, who didn't know Emily. Uh, texted me as we were watching it because she was at, she was at her house we weren't together um, she texted me and said she kind of reminds me of Emily and she didn't even she didn't even know Emily um, then there was Samuel Matze age 16 from Indianapolis Indianapolis Indiana um, this is my friend Emily so Emily was as I said in the beginning um, she was 14, and um, it was the end of her her eighth eighth grade year, and she started hanging out with another crowd. Um, she was with a girl who was turning 13 that night, and they were um, planning ahead to um, celebrate the end of the year, this girl's birthday as well as Emily's birthday, which was coming up in the beginning of June. Um, she had just started hanging out with this crowd. I met on a um, Thursday night when I came home from work, my husband was home. They were hanging out, and I, I met two of them. Seemed friendly enough, um, but I didn't know anything about them. And then, and the, on the Friday night, May 31st, 2014, the girl who was turning 13 asked to stay over and said she had permission. Um, I didn't. Re I got a weird feeling. I didn't really trust what was going on, but I had gone to a. a Warrior Dash that day and did a run. Was exhausted. You know, they wanted to go back out, and it was after, it was 8:30 or something like that. I said, "No, you're in for the night," and you could tell there was disappointment in the friend. But Emily, very um, like herself, was like, "Oh, all right. Well, we can't go out." And um, I just had this nagging feeling, and so I actually put a bin of toys in front of the front door. Um, just because I was like, I hope, you know, maybe they're going to try to sneak out and go to this kid's house that they asked to go to. But I didn't do anything on the other door. And um, I, I had been waking up every morning at 2.17 for whatever reason, 2.17 every morning. But then again, on that Saturday morning, I woke up at 2.17 a.m. and was again annoyed, like, why am I up at Saturday morning, 2.17? Then I remembered and I went up to check to see if Emily was in, and, and the girl was in the room, and they were not. And so I immediately texted, um, actually called Emily's cell phone twice, and then I texted her and said, if you don't answer the phone, I'm going to call the police. And then she immediately called me and told me where she was, which was just two minutes down the road. And um, I sped down there and picked them up and was, you know, obviously a furious parent and was lecturing them on the way home, and the, Emily was full of sorries and, and begging to still go to TJ Maxx tomorrow to get the bathing suit she, that she wanted for a swim, swimming party that the, she was invited to for, for that weekend. And um, she kept on saying, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and I was lecturing the other girl, saying that my, your, your um, well-being is in, 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 under my care, and I take that responsibility very seriously, and it was very irresponsible for you to go out in the middle of the night without any supervision and, and, with, and, and meet people that I don't know and, and, and do God knows what. I had no idea that they were under the influence of anything at the time because I couldn't tell um, until I went downstairs and then I started to hear Emily's voice get long and drawn out and sound strange. So I ran back up to her room and I said, what did you take? And she said, because I could tell that they, she was, something was wrong with her, and she said, I don't know, it was yellow and black or something like that. And the other girl corrected and said, no, it was yellow and blue. And I was like, what? You don't know what? That's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. And so then I just started to panic. But then Emily went into massive convulsions where she was slamming her arms against the wall hard enough so that they could, she could potentially break her bones. Um, so I was 
holding her and then she she was convulsing and fell off the bed and then I um, was trying to, to call I called 911 and got the got the EMTs on the way and before they got there she started to seize and went into seizure she um, clenched the mouth and started to foam and I was trying to open her hands and get her to breathe and look at me but the EMTs came and got her on a board we, we went to the local hospital and we were very quickly airlifted to Mass General um, in Boston where she, we were for three weeks from June 1st to June 21st where every single one of her organs had failed. She had uh, machines helping her breathe, helping her heart beat, helping her kidneys function. She had an external liver device that was, a, that was actually on a um, clinical trial that she was, it wasn't even FDA approved yet that they had to, the doctors had to get special permission to use to, to help save her. And, during those two weeks, Megan was one of the, the most, and, and Megan and her mom were one of the most frequent visitors coming to check on her. And I know that it wasn't easy to see Emily in that state. Um, it wasn't easy for any of us to see her on a daily basis in that state. But, you know, we had hoped and prayed that she would come back and she had slight recovery. But eventually, in the end, uh, her liver failed and she passed away at the age of 15 on June 21st. And so that is why we are here giving this presentation. Tell your kids you love them. Tell your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews, your cousins, because you never know when they could make one mistake that could cost them their life. Emily took the drug that was this big, and that cost her her future, her teenage years, her marriage, graduation, college. If she had plans and she won't be able to go through with any of them, heck, she, might, she could be standing right here next to me <laughs> talking about what happened. <clears throat> I used to sit there in the auditoriums next to Emily and think, that won't happen to me. That won't happen to my friends. That won't happen to anyone in my class. That won't happen to anyone in my school. Happen to anyone I know, but it did. It happened to my best friend. And it's a possibility that it could happen to anyone else. Uh, we said pictures of Emily. That's her whenever we went to the Boston Science Museum. That's her, I think, on her, one, on one of her birthdays. I don't remember. That's me and her, uh, if you're watching, I think, a Patriots game, I'm wearing Tom Brady's number. She's being goofy and who knows what. Um, he's me at my 10th birthday with Emily. Um, so, you. These are some statistics that are from our pamphlet, if you would like to take one before you leave. Um, and this is our awareness walk. Uh, it's on Saturday, June 11th, on 2016, at 10 o'clock in the morning at Skylar's Big Owen Playground parking lot at Maple Ave in East Bridgewater. There'll be raffles, donations, uh, to benefit both the Students Against the <coughs> Decision Scholarship and the East Bridgewater Television and for graduating students of East Bridgewater High School. And thank you. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask now. Emily? Yeah. I, I actually saw the uh, Tara Fitzgerald um, special. I actually had my kids watch it with me. I'm and, glad you um, did. So, yeah, <coughs> that, um, the front, did they catch? so they knew um, who it was. Yeah. Um, they there was no there was the an end of the investigation um, because there was no real um, hard evidence they wanted information from her phone, which I provided, but I did not hand her phone over. Um, they also, uh, there's, a, there's a, a little bit of a glitch in the, in the law of if you 
take a drug that you know, she knew it was 25i, and that, and that killed her, it's, it's, more, it's less prosecuti prosecutable than if you lie and say that it's LSD and sell it. Like the Tower of Cheryl's situation, right. you lied and said it was LSD. Right, so the false pretense part is, is big. Um, the, um, what, the, what will help is this H1155 bill, which is, you know, a, a, as far as my communication with the senators backing this, um, that May 2nd was a deadline for the conversations to happen. And so this should be a scheduled drug that can be prosecuted regardless of whether the, um, the teen took it or not. The other, the, the kid that provided it to her was another 14-year-old. So um, that's another problem with the underage um, factor. But whoever gave it, sold it to him should also have been uh, prosecuted and, and, and brought to justice. But um, at the time, you know, it wasn't something that I was, was um, focused on until when I testified in, in July. It had just been a year since she had passed. and. Um, told the story and I, I, that's when I really wanted to, because I, I could not believe that it was not. So it's a scheduled, um, it's a scheduled, nationally it's a scheduled substance, but it, it, each state has to classify it. So it's not, it's not as easy to, to number one, track through the country in, in, or take to, take to local police and, and have prosecution. Plus if you change the name of the formula, that's right. the other issue. So much like in drug discovery, when you want to avoid patent infringement, you can just move some atoms around on the drug, and then you you're, you can have an inhibitor to 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 something that would help people, but could be a competitive in the in the pharmaceutical industry. But in the drug uh, manufacturing industry, you can do the same thing to avoid the law. So there's a long list of chemicals on that bill that ho hopefully blankets. That's what I was wondering. It's not just one. It's going to be a list. So even if they change the makeup. Yeah, so we're hoping to hoping that blanket's enough, but and then that we can continue if there's more, you know, hopefully that there'll, there'll be enough awareness and of the we've spoken to members of the DEA and we've we've brought awareness. People in the DEA did, don't even know what it is, so this is something that is in, in a very important um, awareness campaign for, for not just for parents and for students and for teenagers, but for law enforcement and for for people in the. Um, first responders and EMTs and that, so this is what's driving us to really push this campaign forward. Also, its original use was not meant for this to happen. Uh, Ralph Heem meant for it to be a, a, a different type of drug uh, that's different to, uh, what drug is used for ADHD and depression, is that Adderall? Adderall, yes. Adderall. So. It's like, it was supposed to be used as something better than Adderall, but it became too potent, and people found out about that and and put it into things such as blotter paper to make it like LSD. And Another point is, so a lot of kids are put on uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors or antidepressants that alter the serotonin levels in the brain, and so a serotonin pet tracer would be a way that would be useful to the medical community to actually see if there's an imbalance in the serotonin activity in a brain. So it would be medically useful. That was the, the thought behind the research, was to have something that could actually measure that. And so in, instead of a psychiatrist guessing, oh, maybe your serotonin levels are off, let's put you on an antidepressant, that there would be something that was actual scientific evidence of that being an imbalance. So that was... Um, the original idea, and then, as Megan pointed out, instead of a, what normal what a normal pet tracer would do, so like I've had to have pet traces of glucose activity to look at metabolism in my brain to make sure that everything was working okay. That just goes in, you image, and then it comes out. It's 22 hours, but this goes in, binds, and stays, and it's not able to, to be flushed from the system. Any other questions? Are the children um, targeted mostly 13? Um, any of them I'm not sure about any younger, but I haven't I haven't seen anything on anything younger than me than Emily or or around that age who have taken it because the girl who gave it to her just turned 14 years old. She was well, 13. 13. She just she was 12. She was oh she just turned 12. It was her 13th birthday. Yeah. So. And did she also take the girl? Yes. Did she also did she survive? 
Yes, she, as far as I could tell, she had no, no visible, visible um, effects. I was pretty focused so on Emily. Got the lesser dose of the, mm -hmm. what they made. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's a clear you example. You never know what the strength of it is going to be because how yeah. Right. Yeah. You showed images of the packaging. Can that be bought locally, or is it through the mail? How how are people coming in contact with it? So there's so the the ones that are shown that actually have price tags on it and say that it's not for people kids under 18. That that would be something similar to um, maybe you remember the when epinephrine was it was available as an asthma medicine. It's, it was available at con convenience stores, and so there's um, in certain states there's there's less regulation as to what you can put out in a convenience store. I don't think that that's the case in Massachusetts. I've never seen it. But as far as I can get gather from the information on, on the web, which is, you know, a lot of it is just from teenagers blogging about what they, where they get things and how they do them, that would be at a convenience store right next to, you know, your e-cigs and whatever. It's like the, the, the mini thin epinephrine uh, tablets that people would take that would give a high that was much like speed. So that was legal and sold at convenience stores for a long time before it was regulated. So another key reason why regulation is important. No, I just wanted to say, I also, I went on, I'm Megan's mother. Um, I went on doing a little research recently and it was only last week that I went on and found um, a company online that is actually selling it now. They're selling it online. I don't know where they originated from. But on their on their website, they're giving purchase points to purchase other stuff. They also take Bitcoin. I think it must be out of the uh, out of Europe somewhere. Um, but yeah, they they were a lot. You know, they take purchase. You know, they money wise, they take um, Bitcoin, and they also get purchase points for additional products. So it's like almost the, like hooking a CVS card or whatever. Right. So it's like giving a taste, just like a dealer would, you know, right. give, a, give a free sample and get, continue to get the people to use when this is, 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 is it's, it's not even Russian roulette, it's one and done. It's not, Emily took one risk, she said no twice, she took it once and it did, she did not have the opportunity to, to make a mistake. She, she took it once and then that, that was it, it's only, that was only one chance. So as the voice, exactly, that's the message that we want to send home, is that voice that told her the first two times, this is too scary, I don't want to do this, I don't know what this is. That's the voice that we want kids to, to listen to because the dangers these days are so much worse than they were when I was a kid and, and when all of you were kids, the, 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 they're fatal. I lost my child. I, I lost so much of my world. Is, is not with me anymore. Anyone else? <laughs> Does the proposed law cover other synthetic drugs like the spices and the The specific one that I'm um, involved in is, is not, it's, but I, I believe that synthetic drugs are, are covered under, I mean, I'm not sure. I think that that, that is something that's being also um, championed for and in, in maybe a different form, but the specific bill is 425I and B and C and all the different forms of it. I've been getting some um, on, on my online um, take action kind of things to go to your senator and representative Mm -hmm. About the, do you have that set up so you can go on and sign up, so it will go directly. So I have a change.org petition. It's okay. just under twenty thousand signatures. Um, so I, every time I communicate with the the senator and house member and the um, their administrators, I always link that and continuously get um, signatures. So I mean that we 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 should definitely have that on our website. Yes, but yeah, it's, um, just. Yes. Just went up. <laughs> yes, so so we can continue. I mean, the, um, the I, I I seriously get um, updates of at least two to three signatures every couple weeks. So as much promotion fit to that as possible. Um, all the help of spreading the word would be appreciated. We have a, a website now. We have a Facebook page now. We are um, you know, we're 
we're getting bigger and bigger in our in our audience and our umbrella of, of spreading this awareness. I have signed it. I think it was a link that you shared that I was able to sign mm -hmm. my signature to it. Yeah, so, so that goes to all of yeah. the, the senators and the House representatives yeah. that are um, involved in the bill's decision. Our website is www.nbombaware.org. Um, yeah. And we have cards have up be, here too. You can take cards which has my contact information, Aaron's contact information, and just um, our website name. And Wait, another question. Do you know if um, any of the local schools or like East West River Mars are um, educating kids about the, the strength of the synthetic drugs? Right. So that's our intent is to do this presentation for the students. We presented at uh, Rainham Middle School. We did seventh grade this week. We're doing eighth grade next week, and we're asking the administrations and administrators if we can come and present West Bridgewater and East Bridgewater. And um, every time we present, I reach out to the, the all of the uh, Bristol and Plymouth County um, superintendents, principals, assistant principals, etc. Try to blanket the the, the message out there so that we can be invited to come go into the schools and talk to the kids about it, especially coming from Megan being, a, you know, a peer of theirs, you know. I, I could speak to that a little bit in that uh, I know that they, in West Bridgewater, the police department does present uh, on dear program. Uh, I think they come in every couple of weeks. And um, the one that I happen to talk was about synthetic drugs and the packaging of Spice. They don't package mm -hmm. them for human use when you cut the implied presentable. Right. It was they a very informative yes. yeah. yeah. That was sixth grade. Six. Very, That's very, perfect. very early. early. You've got to get them before so, they get the middle school. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important, but I think hearing it from, you know, someone with a similar age and, you know, having that personal connection, I think that would be the impact of the kids, too. Absolutely. And hearing it more than once doesn't hurt. Hear it from the police and so hear it from someone who's yeah. suffered from it firsthand. Even colleges, too, are trying to get into Bridgewater State for the be either this summer or at the beginning of this upcoming school year. Um, because the, in college, um, most of the people who have not most of the people, but a good majority of the people who have died from this have been at college parties or uh, have been my age or seniors um, taking it after prom or in other countries dances similar to prom. Um, so everybody's maturity level is different, so everybody's exposure to drugs is different. So some kids go to college and for the first time they're on their own and they experiment. And when, when the age of when Kids' experiment can be any, as young as 12, maybe younger, up until when they start, when they're away from their parents and they start universities and they have this freedom. And so that freedom opens up the door to experiment. And so knowing that this is a potential risk, that this is a potential life sentence, that, that you know, that this, there is no experimenting, it, it, there's just no, um, it's not something to mess around with. It's not something to experiment with. I know that that kids will will experiment and get you know, lots of college kids get drunk or try things for the first time when they get go to college. But it's so important to spread the message that 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 this is lethal. This is a death sentence. Synthetic marijuana is a very scary thing too because um, I don't know really the difference between synthetic and the natural marijuana, because I, I don't I don't smoke, so um, <laughs> so. It's not the same thing. No, it's basically it's called green with the more dry drop on it. Basically, is what it what it is. Okay. Synthetic. It's you know it's totally different. It's man-made chemical. Yeah. Right. Does that that's also a scary thing because if a kid's at a party and they they're just gonna smoke a couple and then they. It could be synthetic, and they don't really know. That's also a very scary thing. Synthetic drugs are incredibly, incredibly scary. Do you know what's holding it up? 
in terms of passage of this? Uh, as far as I can tell, it's typical um, legal um, bureaucracy. bureaucracy, yeah, red tape and that type of thing. I mean, I, there's, I can't, can't imagine that what the argument against it is. Um, but I, as far as I, I continue to ask and prod, and I just get told the dates that their their deadlines are. And so, when the, I was told the deadline was May second for this bill to be passed, I then on May third wrote an email to them all and said, "Okay, so what happened?" And then uh, my the communication back was we're, we're still working on the language. So until it's a bill that I can look at and is it, it, it go on to the mass.gov and see that it's a bill that's in, in effect. I, I won't stop um, bugging them because it's almost like um, it doesn't make sense. It's going to be two years this June that it's since Emily's passed, and it's still a, a non-scheduled. Well, it's scheduled in the United States, but it's a non-controlled substance in the state of Massachusetts. Yes. Does the bill cover provisions for changing ingredients? Because that's the game that they've been playing for so long: is changing one component so it still escapes. So, it's a legal loophole. Does the bill cover that in terms of changes they may make to even one tiny component? So there's a lot covered in that um, in the bill. So there's a lot of iterations of 25i, but also the the 2c original um, structure, which is the, basically the base structure where they did it, what they keep changing is covered under there as well. So um, the, the the government at least is aware of that. That um, trick, you know, it's a, it's a very common trick. It's, as I was saying before, it's done in drug discovery all the time. Unfortunately, in November, if all goes according to some people's plan, it looks like we'll have a ballot initiative to uh, uh, legalize recreational use of marijuana here in Massachusetts. Uh, are any of the folks at the senators that you're working with um, doing anything to actively discourage that and try to get that defeated? Not that I'm aware of, but I do know that there is a, a large faction of people who are against it. Um, that you know, the, the, the I don't I you know I have my own opinions about how recreational uses and, and medicinal properties are, are two t totally different things, and that it, there's a, a long way to go in that discussion, and that I don't think that. Um, I don't think that it's a good idea. If we're, if in the same sentence, we're talking about raising the cigarette age to 21, then how can we then, at the same time, take something that's illegal and already scheduled and, and classified as a, as a seizable and offensible drug, then make that something that's legal for recreational use? If you, can, you can just look at Colorado and the problems that have, that have resulted from that and, and know that. But uh, as far as what the particular senators I'm working with are doing, on that initiative, I don't know, but I do know that there are, you know, it's it's not a, it's definitely a, a there's fo pro fors and against in the in both the House and Senate. So I don't I, I don't think that it's going to be an easy pass, no. in my I opinion. Mean, but the least I've been here is it's kind of fifty fifty. Yeah. The general yeah. population seems to be trying half and half. So well, it, that's probably a good thing that the voting age is eighteen. For one thing, maybe we should raise the voting age. <laughs> I just got my right to vote. Sorry, no, I won't take it away. I'm really excited. Yes, you're going to vote. You're going to vote. Yeah. I mean, could you tell us about what it's like for a student to, to hear when the drug people come in and, and talk about drugs, how that's taken in school? Um, well, in my school, uh, I, I don't like going to those because it just brings back memories of Emily and I just, I usually talk to the person afterwards and give them my contact information about, about this. Um, How do you think the other kids? Oh, the other kids. Some, sometimes, um, sometimes they might not pay attention or not think much of it, uh, especially since sometimes it's, it's a person who no one there knows and it's usually the parent of the person who comes in and says my kid died from uh, perks or heroin or cocaine or whatever they took and and um, and the kids they do take it to heart but I don't think from what I've seen that they really 
sometimes take it into their own lives because they have that invincibility, um, invincibility train of thought that they, the oh that won't happen to me, oh that won't happen to uh, the person next to me, um, because I th I thought that I didn't think it would happen to anyone I knew, but it did and. Yeah, there's a mentality that it will only happen to the bad kids in the bad towns or the bad sections or in the city or someplace where it's with this low income. But as we've seen from heroin, it's it's it's, it's non-discriminatory towards any neighborhood, any town, any any level of um, income. It's just a it's not something that I mean the, the message really has to be that bright young children with with futures who would, who do, Emily was a great student, Emily was involved in arts, Emily was involved in Girl Scouts, Emily was not somebody um, who was, you know, unsupervised. She had two loving parents, she was very involved with her grandparents and her cousins, and, and she was not somebody who um, you would predict, oh, that kid's gonna go and, and try something, or, you know, I mean, not that you can label kids, but you, you know, there's there's that mentality where there's, you know, not in my town, not in my neighborhood, not not we're we're better than that, and that's just not the case. It doesn't discriminate. Addiction is a mental disorder. It it could happen to anyone. They could be addicted to alcohol, or addicted to cigarettes, or addicted to marijuana. Um, even though that's not a very easy thing to be addicted to. I don't I don't know. This isn't even addiction. This is peer pressure or a temptation that they succumb to once in a exactly. moment or in a situation. It's not even an addiction. They don't get that opportunity to become addicted to it. Right, exactly. Well, thank you all for having us. I appreciate the question Thank theme. You. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We have our pamphlets and our cards if you'd like to take one.